and welcome to our Arizona Football Valero Alamo Bowl preview. I'm KGUN 9's Jason Barr. During this digital only special, my colleagues and I will help get you ready for Thursday's big game against Oklahoma. Jed Fish has the Wildcats in their first bowl game in six years. You know, you could choose it as a celebration of the season or you could choose it as a championship game. Those are the two options. And, um, you know, we're going to choose it as a championship game. Are you going to play like a championship game or a, or just a celebration? And we got to come out and play like a championship game. It has been quite a turnaround for Arizona football. Jed Fish inherited a team that went winless in the 2020 COVID season and now has the Wildcats at 9-3. and three. If I didn't think we could win nine games, um, I wouldn't have moved my family here. Jed Fish took over a team in the middle of what turned out to be a 20 game losing streak. It's hard to say if the low point was that 70 to seven loss to ASU or a home loss to NAU. When Dave and Dr. Robbins interviewed me for the job, uh, I didn't say that I wanted to like just win five games or four games. You know, I had high aspirations for what we were gonna do here. Fish brought in a much heralded 2022 recruiting class that has contributed on both sides of the ball. And he's mastered the transfer portal, adding size to a defense that this season was top 15 in the nation in red zone scoring. At one point, the Wildcats were three and three with the heart of the Pac-12 schedule ahead of them. Quarterback Noah Fafita, a part of that 2022 class, entered the lineup for an injured Jaden Delora and never came out. Noah got super hot uh, with a super hot hand and uh, was able to just continue to just move the ball up and down and up and down. Fafita threw 23 touchdown passes and just five interceptions. It's where he separates himself is his poise. His best game coming in a 59-26 win in the Territorial Cup. Fafita threw for over 500 yards, breaking the program's single game passing record and earning Pac-12 Offensive Freshman of the Year. His former high school teammate, wide receiver Tedaroa McMillan, a third team AP All-American. On and off the field, being able to just have that relationship with him, there's so much trust there. Um, I know where he's going to be um, and I know that if I need a play, I know he's going to be able to make it. I definitely think we feed off each other's energy, motivation, and just play and then um, just a love for each other. I mean, we just play that much better for sure. Now, if everything is bigger in Texas, so is the Wildcats winning streak. They've won six straight as they take on Oklahoma in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Fish was one of 12 finalists for the Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year Award. Arizona is looking for a 10 win season, something that's only happened three other times in program history. This year's Valero Alamo Bowl is a matchup of the highest ranked teams not playing in a New Year's Six game. Jed Fish has never been short on optimism. Uh, obviously, Alamo Bowl is a great uh, spot. Texas played Washington last year in it, and now Texas plays Washington in the CFP. So uh, wouldn't that be cool if that was a precursor to um, you go to the Alamo Bowl and then the next year you go to the CFP? Oklahoma will be without its starting quarterback as it heads into the Valero Alamo Bowl. Dylan Gabriel hit the transfer portal and is already headed to Oregon. Gabriel entered the portal shortly after the bowl game was announced. The Hawaii native put up big numbers for the 10 and 2 Sooners this season. Gabriel had 30 touchdown passes and just six interceptions. He also threw for more than 3,600 yards and ran for another 12 touchdowns. Freshman Jackson Arnold has been next on the death chart and he is expected to start for Oklahoma in the game. Arizona left tackle Jordan Morgan is opting out of the Valero Alamo Bowl. It is understandable and not surprising given that an ACL injury kept him from declaring for the NFL draft last year. Morgan was first team all Pac-12 this season. He was a three year starter and protected the quarterback's blind side for more than 2000 snaps during his Wildcat career. Morgan is a projected late first or early second round draft pick. Arizona running back Michael Wiley has seen ups and downs throughout his college football career, which now comes to an end in a big time bowl game in his home state. It was a <laughs> show in the beginning, but. <laughs> well, that's one way to say what it was like when Michael Wiley arrived in 2019. You can't blame him for being honest. He's run through two head coaches, three running backs coaches, a winless season, and a one win season with the Wildcats. How would you describe your journey now that you're here at the end of the road? Uh, perseverance. I'm not really the type of person to just kind of get up and leave. One thing my dad 
told me before I got to uh, college that really stuck with me um, was, you know, as a man, sometimes you might not make the best decisions, but you're defined on, on how you can make it work. And Wiley made it work. Racking up nearly 3,000 career combined rushing and receiving yards and 28 touchdowns. I just try to do what I can whenever there's a big game. His final game as a Wildcat could be his biggest. Arizona is playing for 10 wins and a top 10 ranking at the Alamo Bowl in San Antonio. About a three hour drive from Wiley's hometown of Houston. I'm struggling to get as many tickets as I can for my teammates, uh, for my family and friends. As the Wildcats move to the Big 12 next year, they'll find themselves playing and recruiting in the low Star State even more often. There are some cities, you know, smaller cities in Texas where literally when the high school team is playing, that's that's all they're doing is watching that. So, um, you know, that's just how we take it serious down there. So before Wiley eyes the next step of going pro, it's fitting that his last run with the Wildcats will be deep in the heart of Texas. He's hoping to put on a different kind of show. It's time to go to work, man. That's, yeah, that's pretty much what's always on my mind. At the U of A, Ryan Fish, KGA 9. After 46 years in the Pac-10 slash Pac-12, the Valero Alamo Bowl will be Arizona's final game as a member of that conference. Next year, the Wildcats are headed to the Big 12, which features five teams from the state of Texas. It would probably be a kickoff for us uh, into the Big 12 this game and really be able to see and show our players and let the state of Texas see the type of energy that our players play with and hopefully uh, the high school coaches in the state uh, will be excited about sending their players to us. With more on the move to the Big 12 as well as other topics, here's KGUN 9's Pat Paris who sat down with U of A Athletic Director Dave Heakey. You probably never in your wildest dreams would have thought back in your days in Oregon that this conference would be breaking up like this. And we'd lose the regionality of a conference too. Yeah, there's no way. I don't think you could ever imagine it. Uh, look, I'm a, I'm a kid from the Midwest. Um, love the Big Ten and the Pac-10 um, and, and that joyful day on January 1st where the two greatest conferences ever came together and played football. I waited for that each year. And um, there's so much tradition, history, and story lies behind that. I just, I, I just never could imagine that we would have reached this point. But um, new adventures, yeah. new roads to travel, um, and we're going to embrace every moment of it. A, a little regret that the, the, the Rose Bowl was never a destination for, for our football team? That's a tough one. Yeah. That's a tough one. How much, it, how much it means to all of our fans. And I uh, always wanted to be here when that could happen. Um, but uh, maybe there's something bigger and, and better for us in the, in the future. Um, but uh, that'll be one thing that I guess we'll look back on and say, boy, wish we could have done that. It's a pretty good time to be athletic director at the University of Arizona, isn't it? Yeah, to have two programs uh, at the very you know, highest level is really remarkable. And it's a credit to both programs, the coaching staff, the, the student athletes. Uh, but there's so much good happening. I mean, we're doing all of that. We've added a women's sport. We're growing. Um, we've got the highest grade point average in the history of the program, the highest graduation rates in the history of the program. Uh, so much positive going on. And then again, to be at the highest level competitively, while still focusing on our mission of our student athletes and their overall success. That's very rewarding. The direction that this program is headed is obviously into a new conference. How is that transition going? Here we are, what, eight months out of basically, you know, uh, saying goodbye to the Pac-12 and then entering the Big 12. Well, we're kind of doing dual, you know, duties here. We're, yeah. we're living in, in the real time and then planning for the future and, uh, you know, lots of different meetings, planning sessions. We've got a transition team that meets generally on a weekly basis, uh, assembling data, uh, assembling uh, all the different destination points we need to go to, um, how we're going to evolve from where we are to next year to be ready, not to just kind of feel it out, but to, we've always said we're going to walk right in, be ready to compete on day one and be a premier program in the pack in the Big 12. Is football as in particular, because that's what we're talking about right now, are they ready to go into the Big 12? Because it seems to me like they're very well positioned and, and, and ascending, and maybe it's a good time to go into the Big 12. Yeah, I think the, the growth of our program over the last uh, three seasons has been remarkable, and I think we're well positioned to go into the Big 12 from a competitive standpoint. I, I think the conference in general fits all of our programs very well. 
but we can lodge ourselves in there and be highly competitive. And uh, to carry the, the banner in with football as we open that next year will be very exciting. I think we'll be one of the teams that will be looked at as uh, an opportunity to compete for a championship in that league right out of the bat. A, a bit of irony that you're playing Oklahoma, who's leaving that conference at the same time. I, I don't know, you know what, what, what that says, but it's just interesting, isn't it, that you're playing in Oklahoma? There's always interesting matchups you know, when you get to postseason and different storylines, and that's certainly one of them. But uh, I think it's a terrific opportunity for our program to be on a national stage to sh show the growth, where we're positioned now to be successful long term against one of the most storied programs in the history of the game of football. And so that's exciting to me, and I think it's really rewarding to our football program. Now you're into a conference that has just signed a new agreement. It seems like that, that financially, uh, as far as the media rights deals, it's in pretty good shape. Well, it gives us a really stable home. And uh, that was important. As we looked in the landscape and things were, were, were a little bit unsettled, you know, we needed to make sure that the University of Arizona, this great program, could be competitive at a national level, get great exposure, but also have solid financial footing. And that the, the Big 12 provides that. Uh, the future is there for that. Uh, we're excited about it. And it will only grow. Um, you know, again, the success we talk about in football, um, it's also going to be a pretty good basketball league. Um, the national exposure that it gets now with will be kind of through three to four different time zones. So there will be a lot of attention for the Big 12, and that's good for the University of Arizona. Yeah. It, it appears that there's no major, you know, shifts coming, no layoffs, furloughs, things like that. That has to be a relief. The landscape so, is changing so fast. Uh, we, we certainly need to pivot and, and learn new ways to do things. Uh, we want to make sure that our program as we move forward is on good financial sound mm -hmm. footing, and that's our goal. Um, we're going to look for ways to generate more revenues here. We have to look for ways to do new business in a different way, refine our practices, look for more efficiencies. But I think we all do that. We're reacting to that. We feel really good about where we'll be. And uh, we're, we're going to work right you know, with the university um, to put our, position, our program in a good position. Uh, finally, it strikes me when I see all these photos behind you. Do you look at that wall sometimes and, and, and kind of are in awe of, uh, at all of, of the tradition and history of this university? I am. I am. You know, I, I guess I, I start with I'm honored to sit at the desk and, and look at those things that have come before. That's our responsibility is to really, again, appreciate our great heritage and our past and the tradition, um, build on what is here, grow, continue with the great principles and, and the things that have happened in the past that have helped build the program. Um, it's a privilege to sit in this place, and it's a privilege to be a student athlete. It's a privilege to be a staff member here. And our job, is to serve the people that you see kind of a, a, on the wall, all the way back from the, you know, well over 100 years of, of tradition of people that have come through here. Yeah. Um, that's, um, that's pretty special stuff, and you can't, you can't take that for granted, ever. This is Arizona's second trip to the Alamo Bowl. Back in 2010, future Super Bowl MVP Nick Foles was sacked five times and threw three interceptions in a 36-10 loss to Oklahoma State. Mike Stoops' Wildcats entered that game on a four-game losing streak. Arizona enters Thursday's game on a six-game winning streak. I'm Erin Patterson. I'm here at the Fisher House in South Tucson. They've been partnered with Operation Hattrick and University of Arizona, who are not only helping out veterans, but their families as well. Who would have thought, I mean, to be, you know, to have them pick us and support our families. The University of Arizona teamed up with Operation Hat Trick back in 2018. They sell hats and shirts on campus to help active duty veterans and their families. Uh, the proceeds support the Fisher House and what the Fisher House does is it provides a place for military family members to stay uh, for free while their loved ones are being treated at the VA hospital. And Arizona Athletics host military appreciation games. It's amazing to be at the military appreciation game and to see the planes flying over and the energy and to think that, you know, thanks to the University of Arizona and, you know, the Wildcats. Um, it's just, it's, it's very hard to explain, but it's a very emotional experience. Tucson is a community uh, very much centered around uh, Arizona athletics. So to see the coaches and, and the players uh, wear the Operation Hattrick merchandise is, is great to be connected with them. 
Since the partnership, Arizona Operation Hat Trick has been able to raise over $100,000 for the Fisher House. Having that partnership with them expands the people that we're able to reach. There are a lot of veterans who don't know about our mission and don't know that we're here. Arizona Operation Hat Trick is the first to partner with a Fisher House, but that may not be for long. University of Arizona has led the way for other colleges and universities across the country to mimic what they're doing. So Operation Hattrick is now going to impact other houses across the country by what was established here. At the Arizona Fisher House, Aaron Patterson, KGUN 9. Arizona and Oklahoma have only played twice before. It was a home and home series in the late 1980s. The kicker on that team, Doug Pfaff. Well, recently I caught up with him about a memorable moment during that time, as well as his connection to this year's team. We don't get a chance to play him too often. It was back in 1988 when then Arizona kicker Doug Pfaff and the Wildcats visited Oklahoma. We had a couple plays go the wrong way. The Wildcats lost 28-10, a final score that Pfaff says was not indicative of how close the game actually was. That kind of gave us a lot of confidence that following season when we played him in Tucson that uh, you know we can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with these guys no matter what. Sure enough, in 89, the Wildcats and Sooners were locked in a defensive battle late with the game tied at three. Do you remember lining up for that game-winning kick in 1989? I do. So great snap, great hold, great protection, and kick, uh, kick made it through. So uh, it was a great memory. Crowd was going nuts, and um, I'll never forget it. Pfaff hit the 40-yard game-winning field goal as Arizona upset sixth-ranked Oklahoma 6-3. He kicked in two winning seasons under the late Dick Tomey. He's just, you know, a guy that played a huge role in my life. So, uh, so yeah, I'm thankful that he ended up being my head coach. A generation later, Doug Pfaff's son, Blake, would walk on at Arizona as a defensive back in the late 2010s. Around that time, Pfaff was living in Dallas, coincidentally in the same community as current Wildcat kicker Tyler Loop. I worked him out once and tried to teach him and... And uh, so I've stayed in contact with Tyler since he was a middle school kid and, and have helped him, you know, both hopefully psychologically um, as well as a little bit of teaching on his on his kicks. Now, Loop and the Wildcats are headed to play Oklahoma for the first time since those late 1980s games. Jed Fish's team headed to the Valero Alamo Bowl with a 9-3 and record. Coach Fish and, and his staff has done a great job. Um, far exceeded, I think, you know, my expectations and everybody else's expectations in this short window that he's been here. Winning the way they were when Doug Pfaff was a Wildcat. That's the Arizona football that I'm used to, so it's nice to see it return to where it should be. The University of Arizona's Pride of Arizona Marching Band is 270 members strong. Founded over a century ago, it has inspired and entertained millions. Here's KGUN 9's Pat Paris. Just such a staple in the Tucson community and such an important part of the Wildcat spirit. Chad Schupin knows what the Pride of Arizona Marching Band means to the university and the region. He's not only director of athletic bands, but he's also a former member. I was a trumpet player in the Pride. I was drum major for the Pride of Arizona, and then I was a grad teaching assistant for the Pride. So it's been a big part of, of my life. And it's been a big part of the life of every member of the Pride of Arizona Marching Band. The more than 270 current members are well-versed on the legacy they're now a part of. The most important things they recognize is they're a part of a lineage that goes back to the early 1900s, that we stand on the shoulders of those that came before us. The Arizona Marching Band was founded in 1902 as the U of A ROTC band with just 12 members. The Marching Band made its first appearance at a football game in 1922. The Arizona Marching Band gained national prominence with the addition of Jack Lee as director of bands in 1952. Lee famously wrote the U of A fight song, Bear Down, Arizona, following his job interview, drawing his inspiration from the words he saw on top of Bear Down Jim as he flew out of Tucson. I think we have one of the best fight songs in the country. Our bear down traditions, older than Notre Dame's win one for the Gipper, uh, people don't realize that our, our bear down traditions, one of the oldest in, in college football. Jack Lee helped to grow that bear down tradition, not only with the fight song, 
but with the innovations he brought to the Arizona Marching Band. He wanted perfection, we did perfection. Jerry Gay was a member of the Arizona Marching Band in the late 1960s. Back then, it was known as the best band in the West. Big sound, that's one thing that Jack Lee always wanted to do. We had a big sound. And, and when we played, you, you know, you could feel it. Arizona's reputation as the best band in the West earned them an invitation to play at halftime of a professional football game in January of 1967. You have the distinction of being the first ever halftime Super Bowl act, right? Isn't that something? <laughs> <laughs> the Arizona Marching Band was the halftime entertainment for Super Bowl I at the L.A. Coliseum. They were joined by members of the Grambling State Marching Band, as well as famous trumpet player Al Hurt, who Jerry had a chance to meet. The band's all marching in formation towards two giant footballs when... All of a sudden, these two rocket men came out of the side, and they just came up, <laughs> they, turned, they came around, and I couldn't hear myself, it was that loud. More than 51 million people watched that halftime show on TV, adding to the legacy of the Arizona Marching Band. That first halftime show, the now that's a coveted spot in the entertainment world, and we were the first to be able to, to really take that spot. So it, that's, it's a pretty awesome lineage. In 1977, the Arizona Marching Band played in the inauguration parade of President Jimmy Carter. In 1984, space shuttle astronauts woke up to Bear Down, Arizona. The 80s are also when the marching band began being called the Pride of Arizona, a fitting name even today, according to Schupman. For the Tucson community, but certainly for the whole state, that we want to be that Pride of Arizona. That people are proud of us when we go represent the university and the community in everything that we do. All right, that's a wrap for our Arizona football Valero Alba Bowl preview. For all of us here at KGA 9, I'm Jason Barr. Enjoy the game. Watch KGUN 9's coverage of the Valero Alamo Bowl as the University of Arizona finishes their Pac-12 season and heads for the Big 12. I'm Jason Barr. And I'm Pat Parrish. Join us Tuesday on The Huddle as we bring in sports celebrities and guests and talk sports. The Huddle is on the road to the Alamo Bowl. Join Pat and Jason at the Pit Barbecue in Sonora, Texas to eat and talk football. Sponsored by Desert Diamond Sports